What's going on guys? It is I, Deltre, and today we are back with some more Fire Emblem Bates Lunatic Classic. Last time Camilla smashed two maps back to back and today we're gonna go for another double header because I just remembered that... Oh man, excuse me. <laughs> we're almost back to normal, man. Uh, today we're gonna go for two again though because I remembered that there's another incredibly short map that we could sneak in here and in light of that, I just want to bust these out. I want to just get right into it. I haven't honestly had a whole lot of time to read comments on the previous episode, so we're probably going to double up on both comments on this one as well as the previous one next time. But, for now, I just want to get right into it. First, we are going to start with your girl Sophie. <laughs> Couldn't quite get her in the main game. She is quite good, and she even gives you a free stat booster for doing this map uh, effectively. But we'll see... I guess we'll see just how long this is going to take. Honestly, uh, animations are going to stay off today just because it really speeds this up a lot, <laughs> a whole lot, at any rate. Paralog 5, Bold Approach. Silas's daughter Sophie is carried from her deep realm by her horse. She discovers a bandit attack on a village and decides to fight to protect the villagers. Atta girl, Sophie! <laughs> so her ability is totally ridiculous, which reminds me. Uh, I, I didn't get a chance to see a whole lot of the comments, but one comment job, uh, about Midori made me feel like an idiot. So, of course, of course, I completely neglected to mention Midori's personal skill, which allows her to increase the success rate of any skill that is dependent on luck by a flat 20%. So she doesn't actually have a 30% chance to get gold bars every turn. She actually has a 50% chance to get gold bars every turn, at least within the first seven turns. And one of you guys did actually post the the Miracle Midori setups. And apparently she's considered to be the best player character in all of the PvP for Fates. Which is just crazy to me. Because again, she is actually borderline unkillable if you do the correct setup. It is in the comments of the previous video if you want to check it out for yourself. But I just, I found that to be really funny because she's just this 12 year old kid. And you mean to tell me that she ran the whole metagame? Are you serious? <laughs> I, I don't really know too much about the Fates PvP though, to be honest. I don't know, was it even any fun? I genuinely think that a Fire Emblem game that has like serious player versus player multiplayer could work. I don't know, do you guys think it could work? Because I, I sort of... I see where the issues would be for sure, but I think you could probably fix that if you didn't just make it a route sort of thing, you know what I mean? You could have other objectives. For example, it could be like, you're both trying to seize the same point, or maybe you're trying to seize one another's castle, or, or just something. I'd almost kind of like to see, as like a free mode or something like that, where you could play the main storyline maps, right? but one person would have their team and then the other person could control the enemy's team. I think that would be pretty sweet. It'd be lopsided for sure, but I think that if you were doing like Conquest Lunatic specifically, oh man, the end game would be, it would be pretty cool to see that. I'm thinking like Sakura's map or something like that. Or, or really just any of the maps where you're fighting the Hoshin and siblings, those would be pretty cool. Those would be pretty cool. I feel like those are balanced enough that it could definitely work. Just as sort of a side thing though. As far as real PvP, I think you'd need to spice it up a little bit. I don't necessarily think that just simply defeat the opponent's team would be the best way to do it. Although, in a well-balanced game, I would imagine that the skilled player would always win, more or less, so there's that, I suppose. At any rate, I don't know how I got on that subject, really. So here's Sophie. Good job, Abel. Trotting gently, nice and steady, sweet as can be. Wow, we're doing so well today. Not at all like yesterday. Oh, there it goes. Whoa! Easy there, Abel. I said easy. So is her horse supposed to be a reference to Abel, do you think? Or is... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's so close to it that I almost kind of want to say that maybe it's supposed to be, but... I don't know. I feel like they would have gotten that right if it was supposed to be Abel, surely. Abel! Ah, threw me off again. Daddy said Abel would be the ideal horse for me. But just look at him, bucking me off. That's bucked up. Galloping away, he's nuts. And now where's he going? Oh no. Oh no! What? What? Abel, get back here! 
That darn horse is headed for the portal to Daddy's world. So how do these portals work? Are they just set up somewhere like a like a gate? Because like the Dragon's Gate. You know what I'm talking about? The Dragon's Gate where you go buy DLC and whatnot. Is that how this is supposed to work? Do you need magic to conjure them up? Or can anybody just do that? Do you just need to be inside of a deep realm and then you can leave at will? Or is it only at fixed locations? Can anybody just do that? Can you just simply walk through? Or do you need... Forget it. I'm coming, Ava. I'll get you, buddy. Whoa, so this is Daddy's world. Hmm, not so different, I guess. There you are, Abel. Why'd you run off like that? We can't leave our deep realm. Easy there. Let me up. Phew. Now let's ride back before anyone else finds out, or I'll get into scolding in my life. Besides, Daddy said that it's super de- Super de duper <laughs> Super dupity dangerous in his world. Wow. Hey, you! Compelling dialogue. Hey, you, chub. You're not getting away without paying a toll. And by toll, I mean all your money. Hand it over, I'll take your hands. <laughs> Someone help! <sighs> Sing like that again, and I might just let my comrade pluck out your tongue. Then again, my band of malevolent brothers is in dire need of amusement. So carry on. Scream your heart out. Top of your lungs now. So, something pretty interesting about Nicole here... ...is that apparently he, along with Candace, are sort of implied to have originally been playable characters. And I, th I think that's pretty interesting. I guess they were supposed to be Corrin sexuals, basically, right? So they would only support Corrin. But I'm curious as to what they had in mind. Maybe, maybe I don't, I don't know. It's kind of hard to imagine where they would fit into all this. But maybe you would run into them as enemies, and then either by defeating them or doing some other objective, you can sort of turn them over to your side. Maybe let them see the error of their ways or whatever. I, I don't know if that would necessarily be the route that they would want to take, but... I thought that was pretty interesting. I didn't really realize that there had been characters who were cut like this. You can still capture both of these guys. You can capture Candace, and apparently she can't even class change, I assume because of her model. But... I, I just thought that was so interesting. I never would have guessed that... Besides the story, I guess. I never would have guessed that there was really any cut content when it came to Fates. It seems like a complete package with the gameplay anyways, you know what I mean? So thank you to the person that brought that up. That stuff over there is just about as super double doobity dangerous as it gets. I don't care if I'll get in trouble from daddy. I have to come to the rescue. She's a, she's a real daddy's girl, huh? <laughs> she keeps saying, yeah, Silas is big daddy, all right. Ladies, he's single. Well, actually, he's not single anymore, is he? Huh? I bet daddy will even be proud of me. Steady there, Abel. We're gonna head straight for him. Charge! Charge! Wait, Abel, no! You're going in the wrong way! No! Finally! Finally, we're here. There's the village under attack, but we're so late. So how did we catch word of this? Looks like those marauders have already torn this place apart. Oh no, a band of villagers is rushing the enemies. A sure massacre! <laughs> Why? Why do the Green Unions always do this? We must save whomever we can and bring these villains to justice. I agree. I agree, Silas. So up here is Sophie. You can get her on this map by talking to her with Silas. I'm not sure if Corrin can do it too, but I I know for a fact that Silas can. Over here is Nicole, our boss for the day. Not sure uh, how long this is going to take. How long do you think it'll take to get to him? How close does Camilla need to be, do you think? Oh, it's not gonna be Camilla. Okay, actually, I see how this is happening. I see exactly how this is happening. We're gonna need one health tonic, one defense tonic. All right, so this one's also gonna be really quick. Don't blink or you will miss it. So the main gimmick of this map, as Silas and Sophie would imply, is that these villagers are all incredibly dumb and will not hesitate to run directly into range of danger. What they're gonna try to do is escape up here past the boss. Don't know why they would do that when it seems to me that there's a perfectly clear path along the river to the south, but whatever, let's say it makes sense. They're gonna go ahead and get themselves killed more likely than not. So I believe that the idea is for you to route the enemies in their way, thus protecting them, thus allowing them to escape, thus getting you the most rewards. They don't need to escape, actually, they just need to survive. So as long as you can defeat Nicole before they go down to some stupidity, then you're basically good. Here's the thing though, this is another defeat boss map, and 
I, I want to say that one of you guys actually brought up this point before, but it seems to me that all of the shared kids have really, really easy maps. And this one is no exception. This is this is no real struggle, even if you're going to play it out all the way, like kill every enemy or whatever. Uh, the, you, the enemy units are pretty sparse in number, pretty spread out, and much like just about every map in Birthright, the enemies have almost no skills. And that is true for all of the shared kits. That's going to be Dwyer, Sophie, Midori, and Shigure. I don't think there's anybody I'm forgetting. Maybe there is, but those four all have the same exact issue where... See, I don't even know if I want to say it's an issue. Oh, Kana, of course. Kana does not have a defeat boss map. But the other four do all have defeat boss maps, and I assume that that's so... You can just get on with it if you want to. I don't know. But bottom line, they're all much, much, much easier than the Conquest exclusive kids, as we are about to see. Uh, I think we basically know how to defeat Paladins and Berserkers and all that good stuff by the point. No real need to point any of that out. Okay, so this is how we need to do this right here. So what's going to happen is... Pretty darn simple, all things considered. We need Sue. We need to move, like, right here with Rally Man. Do we even need to? How much? She has 11. And she will have... Yeah, we need to hit her with the Rally. That is okay. So, we're gonna move Rally Man right here. Get all of these fools. And, uh, that's basically game. <laughs> we're gonna move Camilla right here. She's gonna be backed up by Azura. Who can then dance for Camilla. So what we want to do at this point is take Camilla all the way over here. And we are going to switch to Mozu and separate them. By my calculations, this should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, perfect. Alright, good game. Now all we need to do is turn off the animations for one. Because like I say, we want to go ahead and try and get two of these in here. The next one is much harder. I did actually take two seconds to look at it. And yeah, it's, yeah I see why people uh, might have a few issues with that one, to say the least. Now, the big thing that we did right there, though, is separate Mozu and Camilla. That actually gives Camilla one extra tile that she would ordinarily not get. I think I actually mentioned that you can do this a long time ago, as in, like, <laughs> the start of this playthrough, I brought this up. But in this case, it actually makes a difference, because Camilla can only move ten tile. Mozu's gonna repair with her on the next turn, as we will see. But that's gonna keep her safe, basically. Uh, let's go ahead, since Benny's in for some reason, <laughs> let's go ahead and pair them up. So that that way... Dude can do 150 <laughs> god damn damage. She could have done like 450. Oh man, if she would have Dragon Fang critted, that would have been beautiful. But <laughs> at any rate, Betty's gonna pair up with her because that's gonna essentially ensure that these paladins will not kill her without me having to do math. Uh, everybody else is safe as far as I can see. Yeah, there's 31, but there's no way. Nope. Six. Nice try, kid. Five. Oh my god, it gets even worse. Oh my god, it gets even worse. They can't even kill Azura. They can't even kill Azura. Wow. How sad. To be this weak, am I right? At any rate, Mozu can now repair with Camilla, giving her her one point of move back. And, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. What hope do any of you pathetic fools have against me? But you, friend, have an especially hopeful light in your eyes. Come closer. I'll be glad to extinguish it for you. Is that so? Yeah, that's what I thought. Next time, get that winged shield bullshit ability that Hinoka had, man. Maybe you'd do better for yourself. Uh, so hope triumphed in the end, not cruelty. It seems I backed the wrong horse. Alas, no turning back now. Okay, yeah, with his dialogue here, though. And come to think of it, Candace, too, to an extent, almost kind of seems that, yeah, they might have joined you at one point. Like, maybe there was some way to persuade them, I guess, or to, like, convert them. But, uh, none of that here. No, no, no. Like I say, feel free to play the map out if you need the experience, but there's really Good no job, need Abel. to. Not at this point, at any rate. Good job, Abel. You obeyed my every direction in that battle. What? What did you even do, Sophie? But why here, and not at... <laughs> so, Sophie, your steed is more unruly than you've led me to believe. I'm not surprised that he behaved here. The difference wasn't him. It was you. You displayed a newfound confidence. Your directions were assured. That's the secret to being a good cavalier, living up to your horse's expectations. Did he expect you to contribute? Because I certainly hope not. <laughs> Ugh, that's what I needed to do all this time? Yes. Yes, but it's no easy feat, especially since I gave you able to ride. When you told me long ago that you wanted to ride a horse like me, I knew I had to get you a horse with the highest expectations. 
Evil would help you grow into a commanding figure. You see, Sophie, this is really about more than your steed. If you can't ride Evil, you'll command the respect of everyone you meet. Or, if you can ride Evil, you'll command the respect of everyone you meet. Yeah, I respect this cavalier for being so bad that her horse doesn't obey her. Yeah, that makes sense, Deltre. Many who live through these times of war are ready to give up. I need my daughter to inspire everyone to pick themselves up off the ground. That's why you gave me Evil? <laughs> I guess I see, Daddy. But I'm not that Sophie yet. I'm still only... me. Only? Hmm. Hmm, there's nothing only about you, Sophie. Look what you did today. You moved seven whole tiles. You should see Laslo. He could never keep up. Think about everything you're about to do. Huh? Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> you're leaving the Deep Realms. You're gonna travel with our group. Honestly, I'd feel safer with you staying where you are. But you're ready for this. I think you'll learn to handle Abel even faster that way. I'll teach you what I know. That is, only if you want. I could learn a lot from you. I could learn a lot from you, Daddy. Of course I want to come. I have faith in you. I have faith in you. You might surpass me. You're already better than you know. Thanks. Thanks, Daddy. Wow, Abel. You and I are finally... <gasps> Whoa there. Whoa! This way, not that way. We're not going back to the Deep Realms. Abel, sit. Abel, stay. <sighs> ah, Jesus Christ, kid. Well, I see I've got my work cut out for me. Now that we'll be riding together, she'll see how her daddy handles his horse. Great! Great! I got Abel back under control. Sophie. Sophie, well done. You see, the secret is taking control. The most important thing is to always be firm, and yet... Whoa! Does he always do that? Bite at your face? That's alright. I knew he'd be a handful. It's just a matter of... <gasps> Abel, stop eating my hair! <laughs> it took me forever to grow it back the last time. Jesus Christ, Sadness, come on! Why would you do this to your kid? Huh, that's, uh... Wow. Abel, bring her back! Abel! And for saving all those scrubs, we get the partner seal. You need to save a minimum of five for this one. And a minimum of three for the energy drop. So... Not too bad. Next up, however, <laughs> freaking horrible. So, let's just jump right into that one right there. Oh, actually... You know what, Sophie? Yeah, let's actually take the time to explain personal skills at the very least. So Sophie's skill is ridiculous and totally, I don't understand. <laughs> Who came up with this? Who came up with this? After combat, this unit initiates, foe suffers defense minus three, and much more importantly, may lose his or her clothing. Why? Why? <laughs> I don't know, man. Bottom line though, her, her skill isn't that great because chances are if she's fighting something, it will probably die because she's pretty decent. I mean, if Silas can kill stuff, then so too can Sophie. Oh, why didn't I give her strong repose from Selena? Yeah, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna make damn sure that uh, Siegbert has a decent ability inherited. But we're gonna go Paladin for Sophie. We're gonna go Paladin for Sophie right here, right now. Just so she can be like dear old daddy, I guess. <laughs> Also because I think that the skills you get from Paladin are infinitely better than the ones you get from Great Knight. The ones from Great Knight are all uh, luck dependent basically. Not luck is in the stat, but I mean luck is in chance based, essentially. Whereas at least with Paladin you get Defender, which doesn't sound like it should do a lot, but it can do a lot. It really just depends. It's a much more consistent ability and it makes you a little bit better in every way so long as you are paired up. So it definitely edges out Luna and Pavis, in my mind. Nobody really counts on those things going off, you know what I mean? And you're not seeing so much fighting in a single turn in this game that uh, chances are on your side, if that makes sense. If I'm only fighting one or two guys per turn with a character like Sophie, then I don't have the greatest chance of actually seeing an activation skill. It's not like Radiant Dawn, for example, where if you throw somebody out there who has soul or something like that, and they're fighting five or six enemies, then chances are you will see Soul at least once. Here though, the chances are pretty heavily against you, and it's not something that I like to count on, ever really. The consistent ability for Defender to be good is much preferred, for me at any rate. Alright, so this map, unlike the last one, is much harder. Is this the first Conquest kid that we're doing? Let me think about it, I... It might be. No, 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 Forrest was the first Conquest kid. This will be our second though, and as you'll see, this one is much trickier. 
It's much closer to something like what we did with Forest Map, where we actually had to play by the rules, basically. I don't know, man. I just I think that the Birthright kids all have incredibly easy maps. Barring, I mean, I mean, like Kana, I guess, is kind of middle of the road. But in terms of actually beating the map, the Birthright kids are just so simple. So damn simple. I'm not saying to route the map, it's necessarily the easiest thing in the world, but to just beat it, pff, whatever. Anyhow, Paralog 15, Hidden Bravery. As Xander heads to see his son, Siegbert, whom he hasn't seen in a while, the group works together to suppress the sudden arrival of enemies. Well, we're gonna do our best at any rate for Paralog 15, Hidden Bravery. Now, my initial impressions of this map is that it makes so much sense as to why people would struggle here. I'm probably going to be struggling here a little bit. Haven't really decided exactly what we're doing yet, but we'll see if we can't work something out. Brother, your son lives around here, does he not? Hmm, hmm yes. I hope Sigbert is well. It's been too long since my last visit. Do any of these guys check on their kids or what? Father? Father, is that you? By the gods, you've returned. Sigbert. Siegbert, my son. You've grown since last I saw you. <laughs> I just can't believe it. You're actually really and truly here. Sorry, Father. I don't mean to get so carried away. It's just that you literally never visit me. I receive missives that update me on all the important things you're doing. Every time I get one, I wish I could hear it all from you. But I know how busy you are. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, son. I hope you haven't been too disappointed in me. No. No, not at all. Why would I be? It's not like I get lonely here or anything. I mean, no! I would never think that of you, Father. Besides, I've been very busy myself. My studies of diplomacy, polities, I, polities, polities etiquette, the arts of conversation. So somebody did bring up a very perplexing point about the royals in particular when it comes to their kids. So if Xander is the crown prince, it has some very strange implications that Siegbert here is just about as old, or certainly not much younger, you know what I mean? And there's sort of a similar thing that goes on with Ryoma and his kid, where they're pretty much years apart. But what would happen if... Like, okay, so all the parents want their kids to stay inside the Deep Realm, right? So what would happen if... Siegbert actually did stay here until he was literally older than Xander. Wouldn't that screw up the lineage something fierce? Because if he were the oldest one, if he were the oldest surviving heir, then that would make him just... That, that would mean that Siegbert is just that. He would be the heir to the throne. Right? Or due to the fact that technically he's Xander's kid, would that still give Xander the right? Or... Forget it. Practicing my swordsmanship, even my penmanship. All these lessons keep me busy from dawn until dusk. I even dream it. It's in the hopes that you won't be too disappointed in me. I, I see. How impressive. May I prove worthy of such a diligent son. Father. Father, please don't say such a... So I'm guessing that Seabird feels a whole lot of pressure here, huh? Seems like he takes everything very seriously so that he can one day be a worthy heir. You know what I mean? Or at least that's the impression that I'm getting. Who is this approaching? Huh? They're back. Yeah, right, you're not half that good yet, kid. You're not half that good. Don't you lie to me. What? Who's back? Uh. They returned today of all days, at this very moment. Damn them. Don't worry, father. I'll take care of them immediately. You can, you can wait for wait. us, dude. Wait, Siegbert. Yeah, you definitely should be waiting. Because he does not start in a great spot. Siegbert, our boy, is going to start right here. So he's basically Xander Light, but that's not a particularly great thing to be. I would almost say that Sophie is probably the better paladin because she not only comes early enough, potentially, because it's not that hard to get Silas paired up if you really want to. So she can come so early that she actually has time to contribute. Uh, Xander struggles with that a little bit more, I would say, but... Since Xander himself is also a good unit, I suppose Siegbert doesn't have too much trouble existing. Problem is, though, he's never going to be half as good as Xander because he doesn't have the Siegfried. No matter what you do, Siegbert will never be better than Xander. At least people like Sophie can potentially distinctify themselves because they have a different stat line. Siegbert basically just has Xander's stat line 
without the one thing that makes him good. Yeah, you know what I mean? And he's also much worse defensively. And if you contrast Sophie and Silas, on the other hand, you'll see that Sophie is just a strict upgrade to Silas. Even had I made her a Great Knight, she would still just simply be better than a Great Knight Silas. So seeing Bert, pretty average if you ask me. So as for the map itself, it's a pretty interesting objective. It's a combination of two different things that we need to do here. First, we must hit every single Dragon Maiden. Every single one. Have to. That's part of the objective. And what they do is essentially cut off these reinforcement points. As long as the Dragon Veins are not yet activated, enemies will spawn surrounding them indefinitely. They also have that Void Curse ability from earlier, which means you do not get experience for fighting the reinforcements on this map. Uh, the basic enemies will still give you experience, but the ones that will spawn in later do not. So first, we must hit every single Dragon Maid. Then, we must route the enemy. I... Ooh. So here's how I, I basically see this going in my head, right? Because like I said, I looked at it a little bit. Haven't figured out all the benchmarks and whatnot just yet, but we can do that in a second. Here's how I see this going. We hit this one, this one, and this one on the first turn. The reason that we're going to hit those three is because I can put... I can put Ophelia up here, and I guarantee, yeah, in fact she does, she can kill all of these. And because Ophelia is a royal in this case, she can also hit the Dragon Bane at the same time. So there's three of our six reinforcement zones cut off immediately. I guess, uh, probably Percy, I suppose, because he has flight to get through these woods, is also a royal thanks to Camilla being his mom, and I assume that he can one round these guys. I. I, I'm sure there's a way that we can make that happen. We did just get that energy drop, and honestly, Percy is a little bit weak. All things considered, only 32 strength at level 20, so I guess he can probably take that. Don't really see who else needs the energy drop like that, you know what I mean? Mosley's already capped out, so is Camilla. Uh, most of my characters who care about strength are capped out, in fact, so it's really just Percy who's kind of demanding that at this point. Dude can probably hit this one, and she can make up the distance because she has that extra little bit of move. We'll need to kill these two mages without a doubt because they're directly blocking my path of anybody else who wants to come through. I guess either... You know what? Yeah, let's let's have let's have Sophie do that, I suppose. Sophie can kill one with dude backing her up from attack stance. And I also want to send Leo hard this way because I think this is a sniper spawn point. I know this one's a ninja spawn point. Not really sure what comes from here. Maybe, like, more paladins, I guess, or something like that. That would be my guess, but... At any rate, we want to send Leo up this side as well, because there's all these magic users over here, and he one-rounds them, with the exception of this guy, who's probably going to seal his magic. Oh, he doesn't have magic seal. He doesn't have magic seal, so that's good for me. Cool. I thought he did. Is it just the... Oh, it's just these guys. These guys have magic seal. Okay. But because Leo can one round them, it doesn't matter. So now let's see what we can do with that information. Oh, there's also <laughs> this whole situation up here. Not sure how that's going to happen just yet. To be honest, I'm pretty sure that Ophelia can defeat them through their 33 resistance, no lie. But we'll see about all that. I think we're looking good, but I actually want to go ahead and give the Dragon Herbs to Elise. Yeah, let's go ahead and give the Dragon Herbs to Elise, because... I don't know, it just seems like a good idea to me. Does she have to do... I think that this way, if she gets hit by a silver shuriken, she will not be getting doubled by the master ninjas. I think they're literally as fast as they are on the final map. I don't know, it's hard to... It's kind of hard to tell because... Well, they're not here yet, obviously, but... Assuming that they are at least as fast as they were on the final map. I, I guess assuming that they're not any faster than that. Then, with this pair up like so, even if she gets debuffed by four points, she'll be good. Unless they have inevitable end, in which case, uh, screw me, I guess. At any rate, we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot. What's happening? There's never this many of them. The invaders seem to be emerging from the water itself. Curious. Perhaps there's a way to close those doors, so to speak. Alright, thanks, Xander. Use all the dragon veins, then route the enemy. Alright, let's go ahead and give that a shot. Okay, you know what? It's fine. <laughs> it is fine. I forgot to give Percy the energy drop. Anyways, I'm not resetting because I got hit. I'm resetting because this is actually important. 
Because if he doesn't have this, he cannot kill the uh, the dang old guy over there, the Spearmaster. He can't kill him, basically. So, uh, that was a mistake. I guess I should probably double check my work a little bit more carefully. Let's save again. I, I think I saved, but uh, you know how it is. Is there anybody out there who only saves one time? I really don't think there is. At any rate, I have just got to get to the bottom of this. What happened here? 34. Okay, okay. So yeah, that's fine. I, I don't think I need to dodge. I, I genuinely don't think that it makes any difference in the long term, but golly. I thought it I thought it was like a zero for some reason. If anything, she should kill the first guy with the dual club and then be traded to the bronze forge, I suppose. But we can just pop all these dragon veins at any rate. First he can hit that one. He's paired up with a slow because he needs the extra speed, and I don't want to boost his defense at all, so I didn't want to use like Rally Man or something like that. I suppose I could just uh, remove Rally Defense from him though, and it would be more or less the same thing, but we need the extra point of movement as well, so this is the best of both worlds as far as I'm concerned. Now, Ophelia right here. Seems to make a lot of sense to me. Uh, yeah, most certainly, so that's the way we want to do that. We can take this guy out because of Siegbert's nice little gallant ability right there. Whenever he is adjacent to a female unit, they will receive plus two damage. So long as they're fighting together, basically. He can either be paired up or attack Stancy like that. It counts either way. Dude hits the vein right here. Like so, and that's going to clear enough space because the woods do actually get burned down or whatever's supposed to be happening. So that's going to mean we can charge right up this side using our mounted units pretty easily. Or so my theory goes, Leo's gonna do as he has been doing all game long. As I say, as he's been doing all game long, he's gonna run the whole game. And one, two, three, four, five, boom. This should be a great spot for Zen. He can now pick up Azura on the next turn. That guy can do exactly one damage, which is really important because if he didn't, he wouldn't be moving. So that is just great. First, he can take one of those guys out and he can in fact take out the rest as well. Oh my lord. You can't even let them hit you, dude. Come on. None of them can even connect. None of them can do anything. This is the greatest <laughs> possible outcome. No lie. Ah, that's pretty good stuff. It wasn't necessary. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lordy Lord. Are we at that point in the game where everything gets crit all the time? I think we just about are. <laughs> that always happens eventually, right? It creeps up on you real slowly, but sooner or later, all your dudes have like 10 to 15% crit at all times. So Ophelia can almost kill that guy even without... Uh, life and death, which is just insane. She literally almost one-shots them. Of course, she doesn't get hit at all because she is really good. It's actually preferable here that she's not one-shotting those snipers, though, because that gives her more shield gauge. And that means that Elise gets more shield gauge, which is good because I would like her to take these guys out of my hair. She needs one dodge in order to do it. I say that she can, because Elise is ideally going to end up right there. We can make that happen by using Ophelia first. And again, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna get two charges right there. Is there a way to do better than that, or, hmm. You know, I'm not entirely sure. What I do know is that dude can probably, okay, what am I saying? Dude can kill the other melee. Or not melee, but Dark Knight. Dude can kill the Dark Knight, basically. And by putting Leo right here, this should force the other two snipers through the woods, which is gonna give them just enough of a movement penalty to make this safe. So we can do something like this with Dude. And this is basically going to ensure that the snipers have no choice but to die to Silas. Basically. Not Silas. They, oh God, I wish Silas was that good. They have no choice but to die to Leo. Who is preferable for this because they all have range and whatnot. So that is why that happens as it does. I'm thinking that Camilla can probably pop this Master Ninja vein. As you saw right there, some Master Ninja spawned in, as well as those snipers that we're starting to work on right now. No, she's going to need Azura's help no matter what we do, I'm thinking. So, we'll pair Azura with Xander. We'll give Azura to Siegbert. And that seems to be like a pretty good place to start as far as I'm concerned. Uh, let's go ahead and drop off Percy a little bit closer too. If I need to, I can just repair the two on the next turn, but that should be a good place to start, I want to say. How close do we need to be for these guys? We need to be at least right here. Right? 
Or is there a better spot? Is there some way I can make them all switch to the spear? Or like the majority of them switch to the spear? Because that would be preferable. It would definitely be preferable if they were on the spear and also not on any worthwhile terrain, basically. No, it looks like if I'm going to do that, I'm going to need to put her in melee range. The spear is better because it nerfs their avoid, basically. And Elise is herself, so uh, any little bit helps, man. Yeah, this seems good to me. So Ophelia can kill this guy. Even if she had got hit by a few snipers, she would be able to life take her right here. They actually only have like 30-something percent-ish on her, so it's not really that likely. Actually, no, I think they have certain blows, so they probably have more like a 50, let's say. But at any rate, she would be able to restore some of her health, and she's not too KO'd. By the time the third could even attempt to hit her, she would have been able to block, as we saw. So, she was safe there no matter what. Absolutely no matter what. Let's move Camilla. Makes more sense to lunge into his position, I think, because then I could get the Savage Blow on this guy. Or I could just bank on Mozu hitting two. Let's just assume that Mozu will hit two through attack stance. I can use the dual club right here, and in fact, that should... Yeah, this will work. And then Mozu can use the attack stance with the dual club in order to ensure that this goes her way, basically. Like so. And she's also getting a hit boost. Yeah, there's no way. This guy is very dead. Very, very dead. And then we can use Azura to move Ophelia, basically. Which is exactly what's going to happen right here. So we can move Elise. Where did we decide? I guess this is where we must have decided, because... Yeah, I wish there was a way to get all of them, but I, I'm not seeing it. Unless, oh, I guess I could put somebody here. And then have Elise over here, but I don't know how that's happening, really. I don't think Percy could have made it, right? So, and even then, even then it wouldn't be as good because he can't actually kill thanks to the fact that he cannot double attack with a hand axe. So yeah, this seems to be the best way. Oh god, am I actually inside the range of that sniper with Elise? Because that's not what's supposed to be happening here. <laughs> if so. Oh lord, tell me I didn't move her incorrectly. Good god, I don't have time for this. There we go. <laughs> good, good, good. Good, good, good. All these Brynhildr procs. I'm sorry, I thought it was supposed to be unreliable. What happened? Speaking of unreliable, though, here comes Elise. We can watch some of these because I know she needs to dodge one. Which is why she has everything that she does. If she dodges, which she did not, I think... Oh, she did. Cool. So she's totally safe. She only needed to dodge one. The spear guys are actually less accurate than this. And overall, you can see she has a fairly good shot of hitting the Great Knights at 88%. She has a good chance of hitting this paladin as well because he has the spear equipped. It's really just this last guy who's a little bit sketchy. Yeah, only 80% on this guy. Which could be better, I admit. Dodge, dodge, dodge. Oh. Come on, Elise, let's do it. One, two, sweet. So all of them go down to her. All of them go down. She only needed one dodge over that entire course of action, so not the worst thing in the world, in my opinion. All right, so the rest of these guys are coming in hot. Not sure entirely what we're doing with those yet. Looks like it's great nights from that point, I suppose. Oh, is there another dragon vein hit up here? Yeah, there is. There's a dragon vein hidden under this boss. But with these guys being generals, this is the easiest one. Generals are of no threat, wary fighter or no. In fact, they don't even both have Wary Fighter. Wow. So we could take all day with these guys, is what you're saying, basically. Now, this is where the trick will lie, I want to say. There's one Mechanist. Ooh, I'm not sure how much I could do about him. It may be in my best interest. Hold on, what are these guys having? Okay, good. These guys are locked to melee. Those guys are all locked to melee. That's what I wanted to see. But it may be in my best interest to just try and kill these guys, then. If this guy had moved a little bit differently, I might not have to worry about it, but... And despite the fact that Mozu... Or despite the fact that Camilla can easily take a hit from one of these guys, despite her bow weakness, I have my doubts about Mozu. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So maybe we don't want to let her take a hit if we don't need to here. Okay, well, the easiest thing to do from this position would be to kill this guy with Sophie. Seems to make sense. Leo can hit the dragon bait. Yeah, seems good to me. I would have liked to have him kill something here just to get life taken, but I don't really see it, and it's not really necessary. So we'll do like so. I suppose that Archer can... Not Archer, but 
the mechanics. He can switch to a bow, I suppose, at this point. It's a better hit, Leo. But then I can just run up into his face with Leo and destroy him, so I'm not really that worried. Dude's gonna go all in because now she should be in range to easily hit that Master Ninja Dragon Bait. I think we're gonna go ahead and wait for one turn on that because it just seems much safer to try and kill as many of these guys as we can. Now I suppose that Percy can actually take a hit through the bow weakness, right? So maybe that's what we're gonna go ahead and try and do here. Yeah, Percy and Camilla can both still take a hit, and I have no doubt in my mind that Camilla can smack around all of these guys. Not with the dual, not with the dual club, that's for sure. But with even the the uh, the Bronze Forge, with the Bronze Forge, she can do it. So how are we using Azura then in that case? I suppose would be the next step. Because Percy can combine with Mozu. Kill one. Elise can maybe kill another. I don't know. Is there a better way? How about you, Ophelia? Okay, yeah, Ophelia can kill another because she has a hit rate that exists. Um, is there some way that I could do that and then dance for somebody important, though? Ah, here, here's a move. Here's a move right here. So we can take away Siegbert right now. Xander should not be in range of anything. Uh, he's in range of these guys, but you know what I mean. He shouldn't be in range of anything long term. Now we can put Laslo there. That's going to let us kill one of these guys from range. And if that's the case, then I can use... Who would be the best, do you think? I suppose Mozu makes the most sense, right? Mozu can kill this guy with Percy's help. Actually, she can do it by herself, but then Percy isn't close enough. So we will pair these two regardless. Mozu can kill this one with the iron bow. I suppose Ophelia can kill the other. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh, shoot. The best thing to do would be to have Elise kill the other in all honesty, but that doesn't seem like... I don't know. I don't know if that's really smart. Oh, hello, we have a full shield gate. Okay, I see how this goes. I think, I hope. Uh, Mozu can kill this guy. Mozu can kill this guy right now, for free. She's gonna take a little bit of a beating there. You're gonna lose some of that important speed, but she should be okay for the time being. Azura can dance for Mozu. Now, we can move here with Percy and lunge into this guy's place. Mm, yeah, we're gonna take the speed hit with you too, my man, but it does not matter like that. So we'll take this guy's place, though, and that part is actually important. The ninjas cannot move through the lake. They can't, like, go around this way to get to Azura. So as long as somebody ends up right here, she's going to be safe, which is exactly why we're going to move Camilla, like so. With the Bronze Forge, she takes this guy out. She takes this guy out. Every flyer that's going to be in range of these enemies, actually, it's going to be the ninja that survives either way. So I, I suppose it wouldn't matter like that, really. At any rate, though, Camilla can smash this guy. No problem. We even get some savage blow action. Does that does that factor in here, or what? Not quite. Wouldn't want to make that move either way. Uh, Ophelia, though, can kill this guy. And because she can retaliate on everything in this area, she will have a shield gauge by the time she could have potentially died, if I have done this correctly. She'll get four right here. No, I don't believe that the Master Ninja... Okay, well, now we're dead. <laughs> now we're dead. Probably. Possibly. I don't know. Let's find out. I'm not entirely sure that we are, to be honest, but it's going to be a lot closer than I would have liked. No, I guess we're not dead. Otherwise, they would be going for it. I should imagine. Oh, yes, you fool. The fool. Oh, am I the fool? I might be the fool here. I'm the fool here. Oh, no. <laughs> Bad math. Oh, weapon triangle. I believe. Oh, no! Hmm. How do we fix this, I wonder? Because that wouldn't have changed, really, even if I had killed the other guy. You know what I mean? So, that's kind of out of the question. Let me rethink that for a second here. 
Because that mostly worked. We want something like this. But clearly not exactly this. Okay, so in reality, I think that this is what we want, right? I'm not really counting on Ophelia to kill that guy. I just want to take the shot. But from this formation, we should actually be good. We can still pull in all of the great knights. They have no choice but to attack Dangle, Percy, and or Camilla, both of whom can kill them in one single round of combat. I do believe that we saw three more will spawn, so we need to do this. And you might have also seen that I turn... I turned Siegbert into a great knight this time because I, I realized I need some way to actually defeat those guys coming in hot from the left like that. And my best bet, I think, is to just throw Siegbert at them. And since Xander actually is carrying the Beast Killer right now, I can start killing some of these guys right now. Don't necessarily need to kill this lady just yet, though. I've just realized. Yeah, I don't because none of my flyers are in her range. And if Siegbert is over here, I beast kill this one right now. Oh, God, they can't even hurt him. That's not good. Why can't they hurt him? Oh, armored blow. Yeah, I was, okay, never mind, never mind. They can hurt him. They can hurt him. That's important because that's either going to force them to use the javelin or uh, die to me in melee when they try to double me. I'm not sure which they will do, to be honest. It doesn't really matter like that as long as I'm actually killing them. And likewise, they can feel free to go after Percy all they want. They're not going to be too successful, I can guarantee. Uh, we should probably stay out of range of at least one of them, though. I think Ophelia can take two, so if I want her to, she can kill this guy. But... God damn, <laughs> there's got to be a better way than that. What? There's got to be a way better way than that. Hold on, now. Hmm, I think I'm seeing some moves, though. Uh... Percy can kill this one because he cannot move. Now, Camilla either has to kill this lady right now, or she can... Can she reach the free staff? Oh, she can reach the free staff. I think that's what we want in reality, right? Because if I kill the free staff, then Percy can move again. No, because he has 22 defense, like I say, so that's 15 plus 15. These guys can't reach. And Azura can't do anything else meaningful this turn. So, technically speaking, isn't the move to do this, right? I want to say that it actually is. Let's do it. That's going to mean that Percy can... Oh, he doesn't have rally defense. I suppose he probably should, but he needed everything else as well. I suppose I could have dropped lunge, perhaps, but that's really the only one that comes to mind. Now, spears, do they double or what? I, I think that they actually do. They're just really heavy, right? That's how this works. Oh, none of them have spears. Or I killed the only one that did. I'm not entirely sure which. And these Grey Knights are yet another situation where they have both a Beast Killer as well as a Armor Slayer. So you need somebody tanky who is flying, basically. It, basically, you need a Wyvern Lord. Is what the game is trying to tell you, I want to say. Okay, yeah, that, that'll do then, I guess. Uh, Leo it is. Leo goes first with the Calamity Gate. Has the least chance of missing and gives us Heartseeker, more importantly. He also takes no damage. <laughs> God damn it, Leo. Anyways, with Heartseeker in play, we can poke this guy to death 100% of the time. 
dude can sneak on in here. No, not support. She can sneak on in here, as I say. She can now take the Pope. And she can one-shot this guy. 100% of the time. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. Okay, so that's how those guys are handled. Phew. That, that, that started to look really bad there for a second. I will not lie to you. Camilla. I can't lunge this guy, can I? Oh, can I or what? No, that's with the hand axe. Okay. I was going to say, because if I could lunge this person... I'd be able to get next to the hero as well, you know? You think she one-shots with the hammer? I honestly think she does. I I didn't really... No, she doesn't. Okay. Looks like she would have needed a rally for that anyways, and we didn't really have that option here. So she can do that eventually. I'm honestly kind of tempted to dual club him, but no, no, no. No, no, no. This makes the most sense. This makes the most sense possible. So we'll take out the free staff right now. Siegbert is more than fine over there on his own. Oh, she would have killed them with the hammer. Hello, Savage Blow. She would have killed one of them for sure. Well. We're not in range of this guy with Laslo, thankfully. I'd like to move Ophelia here. I can either use that elixir that I bought forever ago with Leo, or I could just move here with... Uh... Yeah, let's move there with Elise, leave her out there, because she's got much better mobility here, right? Now, as you can see, Siegfried has a billion HP and defense combined. These ladies can only do six at a time to him at best. The javelin is doing no kind of damage. Uh, if they want to do anything to Siegfried, they have to get into melee. There is no question. And since Percy's the only one who moves, if we've screwed up, it's too late. So, let's see what happens. Camilla's gonna block there, as expected. I do not believe for a second that they can do 17 damage to her. I'm not even playing with you. I'm not even playing with you. No, <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> not even close. So Percy should actually be able to take out some of these Great Knights for me. Which is exactly what we're looking to see right here. And he will be able to block some attacks. Oh, he gets... Why? Oh, she had Darting Blow, though, didn't she? Well, it does not matter because the others cannot do enough damage. He will block at least one attack. And yet, you can see they're not even going for it because, like I say, there's no possible way for Siegbert to die in that scenario. This lady does double him, but that does mean she's getting into melee, and that's not a good idea, as you can see. So there's two more knights. Two more knights. Oh, I should have just hit the vein, man. Clearly. It's getting kind of out of hand. But Siegbert can just do this, hopefully. You think that Xander has more skill? He doesn't. Okay, so yeah, we'll do that with Siegbert. We'll hopefully take this girl out. But at this point, if need be, we can recover. We can recover. The only main things that need to happen here would be to hit this vein and hit this vein. And this girl must also die. Because if not, she will kill Siegbert. So please hit this. Thank you. So that's that's really good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to add about that. That just couldn't be much better. Oh, it is a good day. And I honestly think that Laslo put this lady in his own range, which he did. But that would sacrifice Azura, so let's see if there's not a better way first. Okay, so the only reason these guys cannot attack... Oh, this guy doesn't move, or what? Why does it say... Oh, he has a steel javelin. What? Cheater. Cheater. Well, she would have she would have lived no matter what, I assure you. But... I didn't realize he had one of those kind of weapons. At this point, Camilla can do away with this guy, I want to say... And that might be where we're at. Otherwise, she takes three and three. Oh, come on now. And we will not be in range to be attacked at melee with their much stronger weapon. So that seems very safe. By the way, not all of these generals have wary fighter. Only about half of them. When they spawn in, one does have it, one does not. We can take this guy out thanks to that shield gauge we had on the previous turn allowing us to block and therefore survive to this point. <laughs> That certainly would not have been very good if Camilla had eaten that hit head on. I'll say that. At this point, there's six of them and six of us. So once again, I'm going to go out on a limb and say we're not hitting this Master Ninja vein just yet. Or any of the veins just yet, so that kind of sucks. But we are pushing through enough of these guys. Which is the more important thing here. We've made the progress that we need to make, I think. But my biggest fear right here 
is failing to kill these ninjas, which is why we want to do this in the most reliable way that we possibly can. Yeah, it's just occurred to me how much of a problem this guy actually is. Um, so Leo, I don't want Leo to do the killing. I want him to move to this fort, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, if Leo is on this fort with Percy right here, then we can kill this guy with Leo via lightning. And that would be a better way. This girl got herself doubled by Laslo. What? How embarrassing. Man, I should have had the hunter's knife on. I should have had it on. There was actually no reason not to in hindsight. I just, I didn't want that to screw up the, like, the way that these guys moved, you know? I thought that it might. Like, they would have some kind of self-preservation instinct, <laughs> basically. That was my fear. That was totally unfounded, though, in hindsight. There was no reason to go about it like that. Yeah, because if we had one less guy to kill here, we, we actually could hit one of the Dragon Banes right now. Okay, Ophelia kills you, Life Taker. This one is Heart Seeker. We poke you. We heavy metal you. Dual attack with Leo. You die as well, so that's three right there. Kill you. Via Percy. Kill you via Leo. Azura dances anybody. We kill this one. Camilla is still safe. When did these guys stop spawning? <laughs> I assume they don't stop spawning. But if I could just get like one turn here where I'm not being wrecked by everything, that'd be great. Even if Ophelia misses the first attack and gets hit as a result, she has life taker, so she will not die to the mechanist. So there's that. There's one. Dude pokes you. Thank God she one-shots these clowns. Like, I gotta say, that is so huge here. Dude pokes you at any rate. Savage blow. Sophie murders this one. Most of the time. Please, oh please, Sophie, not now. <laughs> Thank you. Percy kills you. Leo, lightning, because he's still unpaired. Yeah, Leo, lightning. Goodbye. Life taker. Yeah, even if he had been getting hit all this time, it really wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't matter like that, basically. Uh, everybody over here is still safe. Siegbert is still safe. Yes, this is what we want. Yeah, honestly, I'm about ready to just give this to slow. <laughs> no lie. I don't see what else I'm doing. I can't really gain that much ground. I suppose I can move in slightly with Leo, but I don't even know that these guys will go for Leo over Camilla because Camilla cannot retaliate, so... Nope, it makes more sense to actually get this kill on Lislo himself because... This keeps Azura slightly closer to the front of my pack here, basically. So get out of here. Should have had this equipped last turn, and we would be able to hit a vein right now. But I am trash, and that is how that goes. Why, yes. I found all his speed, guys. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Dude has nothing to do with this. I should leave her out of it. Yeah, these guys have no hope against Camilla, as far as I'm concerned. But what else is new? Two great knights, two more knights. We can now finally pop this vein, which needs to happen because I'm about tired of these master ninjas. I don't know about the rest of you, but I have had enough. We can do a nice 21 to you. And it's about time we threw Camilla out here with a hammer, if not for the fact that every last one of these bastards has a 1 to 2 range. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man. I don't know about all that. Dude hits the vein. Is danced for. Either moves up this way or kills this guy. Yeah, that seems good to me. Good enough at any rate. Uh, I'd like to move in, but I would also like to not... In fact, I'll tell you what, this does work. Because I would prefer at least to be in the lead, obviously. Because again, movement. Had she missed there, I could have very easily finished off the Great Knight with Siegbert. So there was nothing lost by making that move. I can now kill this guy with Percy. Camilla can now hit the Bane. I'm actually going to switch over to the Hand X just for the sake of 
being able to retaliate on this guy, basically. It'll make it easier to defeat him that way. Camilla takes care of this one. Like so. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. That changes things. Slightly. But not a whole lot, because worst case scenario, I can put... I can put a... Uh, your boy right here, basically. Doesn't look like it's gonna come to that. Let's... Okay, first of all, let's hit this Dragon Vein to make sure I haven't screwed this up somehow. Because I forgot their movement is gonna be a little bit different. So how far can this guy reach? Cannot reach Azura. This is safe. And the only thing that can hit Azura is that guy. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So with Dude, we are not gonna sing her up. She is going to annihilate this guy, send him backing on into the next life. As she often does. Uh, Sophie, do we want to start drawing some of these guys towards the right-hand group? I honestly think that we do because... Yeah, it just makes more sense, honestly. With Leo, I... <sighs> we want Leo in this guy's face, and also we want to hit Heartseeker. I, I mean, we want to have Leo in his face for the Heartseeker. And this will let him retaliate on the other guy, basically. Even if he had gotten hit, again, Life Taker, very broken. And with only four knights remaining, well, y you know what I mean. Not so many enemies remaining at this point. We should be good to start working them over, I want to say. Does Laslo do anything meaningful with the debuff here? Because if so, I can honestly afford to throw him out there. Yeah, I don't lose anything by this. I don't lose anything at all. So, this is exactly what we're gonna do. Wait, we might lose something. I've just remembered dual attacks exist. I am too afraid I did not do the math. So, never mind. <laughs> yeah, because they could dual strike me, I've just realized. And that would probably kill Laszlo. He's only got 23 defense. Yeah, he's only got 23 defense. I know he would have lived. I've, I'm underestimating his bulk, I realize. But... I would rather be safe than sorry, basically. For the rest of these clowns, though, it does not matter. Leo's gonna get some good damage. The, the rest of them, they, they can't really hurt anybody. It's just a matter of... Well, I say that. Come on now, Leo. Come on now, Leo. What was that? You're, gonna, you're just gonna let them walk all over you like that. Crazy. But unless more of them spawn... Okay. <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down, game. I think I see how this goes. Can I honestly not make it with anybody? Oh, okay, well, if I put Dude over there with the Armor Slayer. Yeah, Dude with the Armor Slayer can do that. She'll actually Savage Blow this guy so then she can kill the other. That's how I see this going. And since she's really broken, I'm not really afraid for her safety here, so I think that... This makes the most sense. This guy does not have... Does she need the armor slayer? She does. Okay, I just wanted to check. Just for my own curiosity's sake. Anyway, she can smack this guy around a good bit. Savage blow the other. And that... Mm, that won't actually kill through the old armored blow. Not armored blow. It won't kill through weary fighter, I mean. But... We can kill the rest of them. Meaning that Camilla is safe. Meaning that... Honest to God, though, Percy might be able to do it, huh? Yeah, Percy can kill that guy. The rest of these guys are all sufficiently chipped. Which means we just have to consider the guys with Weary Fighter first and foremost, which would be you, you. Not you, though, so that looks like Ophelia and or Elise food to me. Give Arthur to Camilla? Yeah, I mean, give Arthur to Leo, I guess. Would do the trick. Yeah, there we go. We just want to kill these guys as best as possible, obviously. So that guy goes down. Good. Siegbert can kill this guy. On my life, I wanted to say that Xander can kill that guy. Percy can then finish this guy. Elise can kill this guy. Oh man, I think I think we're actually just one shy. I think we're one shy from being able to do this. Maybe not. Maybe not. I've just realized we have yet to account for Leo in this plan. 
And if that is the case, oh man, this could be it. This could be it. Let's move right there to get 100% accuracy. No reason not to. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how that happens. Another savage blow. Oh, but wait. We can't reach. Yeah, we can't reach with Xander to kill the other. Unfortunate. Because I know that in my heart of hearts, dude can rock this guy. Dude can absolutely rock that guy. In fact, I'm so sure that she can, but let's just do it right now. And I'm so sure that everything else is going to be dead. In fact, everything is going to be dead. It's just a matter of the fact that I have nobody to hit the bane. I think. I think. I don't know. Let's find out real quick. I can't see it happening, though, unless... Oh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. I can see exactly how this could happen. But will it? In fact, honestly, we've got so many savage blows that, yeah, what am I even talking about? Am I new? I must be new. Siegbert kills you. Xander moves here, takes the lance from Siegbert. Doesn't really matter which. That will do just fine. And look at that. <laughs> I could have used Leo for that, obviously, but let's give it to his kid. No Pavis or anything like that to block us here. Level up for Siegbert. Not bad, kid. Hey, at least he got himself a level. And a good one, too. Golly. And... How long did that take? Seven. Not too bad. I think you could probably do it faster. Good night. I've had about enough of this map. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I think the big thing with this map is that the reinforcements can very, very easily overwhelm you. Shoot. Happened to me. <laughs> can happen to anybody as far as I'm concerned. And that is the scariest part by far. By far. But it is also important to realize that the general spawn point is basically useless. The only thing it can really do is slow you down at the end of the map. Those master ninjas, though, are pretty nasty. That's a very nasty surprise. And I also have to say that it's a very devious move to have those flyers all come in from the upper left like that. It certainly, uh, it certainly makes it a lot more challenging than it would have been to just simply have them move when you enter into their range. I'm not sure if they start moving when you progress a certain distance into the map or if it's based on like a timer or something, but dealing with them is important. And I also think that promoting Siegbert into the Great Knight as opposed to a Paladin helped with that. Now, if you're trying to use him long term, then Paladin is just a better class than Great Knight in almost every respect. The one point of movement is just better than anything the Great Knight can do. Now, if you're talking raw stats, though... If you're just talking raw stats, then Great Knight does have applications, but it's not because of the class itself. It's more because of the the hard number, if that makes sense. If Siegbert had the same amount of raw defense as a Paladin as he would as uh, essentially as he would as a Great Knight, then Paladin would just be better, hands down, uncontested. So keep that in mind. But in this case. Great Knight is what helped us beat that map because as you can see Siegbert really needed the extra defense to even survive out there. I thought he would be a lot bulkier than that to be honest. I thought you were Xander's kid. What happened? I know Charlotte's your mom, but come on, dude. Breaking my balls, man. Anyways, fun map, challenging map for sure. Siegbert. Yeah, I honestly think this might be the hardest kid map so far. I, yeah, I can't really think of any others that were this bad forest is pretty tricky too i want to say but i don't know it's kind of a toss-up for me between the two so far anyways i guess we'll see how i feel about that when we finish the rest siegbert this isn't the first time these enemies have come here is it why didn't you notify me i, I just couldn't bring myself to do that father mm -hmm. hmm? i expect you to do your duty son uh, i'm sorry I've heard so many tales of what an important leader you are. You've got a whole realm to look after, countless lives. If I can't manage a few incursions here, if I couldn't defeat them, I wouldn't be worthy of being called your son, so I couldn't tell you. Huh. Commendable. Father. Father, but I've hardly done anything worthy of such praise. Siegbert, not many people need to learn how to shoulder such burdens alone. You do, I'm sorry to say. Yet I've never had to tell you so. You came to that realization on your own, and 
and meted out justice by yourself. Incredible. Father? Father, you truly think so? I worried I was bringing shame upon your name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, son. While you have grown into your role, I have failed in mine. I'm not just a ruler. I'm a father, and I have a son to look out for, too. So I gotta say, this... This whole... This lesson, I guess, for lack of a better word, seems to come up way too frequently with these. And I have to say, it certainly makes the paralogs themselves a lot less compelling in terms of story. With Leo, at least there was an interesting situation surrounding it, because he was outright being an asshole, which is certainly outstanding compared to the rest of these. It's certainly more memorable, but for every parent to come to the same conclusion that, hey, maybe don't leave your kid to raise themselves, essentially, off in some other dimension while you do whatever it is you need to do. I don't know, that just seems like that should be more obvious to more characters. You know what I mean? It can't just be me. I know it's not just me. <sighs> and it gets really stale. It gets really stale reading the same exact thing every single map, you know what I mean? Silas was the only one who didn't really have this revelation. It seemed like he was doing it very intentionally, which, you know, that's befitting a stalker, right? Why stop there? Why not be a terrible parent on top of that? Thanks, Silas. <laughs> uh, I'm just messing around, obviously. But you get my point, I hope. This just th this plot point seems to come up too much for my taste. I, I have to be perfectly honest. From now on, be sure to tell me anything that's on your mind. Um... Um, then may I... Could I possibly... <sighs> I want to join you, Father. What? what? Join me. I... But I'm on the bench, son. <laughs> I... I know why you placed me here, to keep me out of the war. But I believe that I will serve our kingdom far better there than here. Listen. Listen, the war is more brutal than you've read in the miss. Uh, the war is more brutal than you've read in the missives I've sent to you. The battlefields are bloody. Lives are lost. What you see may haunt you. Are you truly prepared for that? There's no dishonor in saying no. Indeed. I will send you back here if you prove unready. Yes. Yes, I am. I swear that I, I am. See. I see. I trust you know yourself better than I do, son. Yeah, considering you hardly know each other. Then you are welcome on our grim march, Siegbert. <laughs> Thank you, Father. I won't get in your way. Together. Together, son. We march together, not apart. But I give you my oath. I will defend your life at all costs. That is my privilege as your father, and your right as my son. Well, as nice as all that is, that is that. And with that map complete, we are going to call it here. So, all things considered, we had a pretty easy one today, and a bit of a tricky one, I won't lie. I think it's perfectly possible. The big key is, again, being able to identify which dragon veins are actually dangerous. You don't really want to deal with the ones at the start because they are going to slow you down in a huge way. And the longer you take on that map, the more likely you are to be overwhelmed and swarmed. You don't need a particularly large amount of characters that can just kill things, as you saw. It's... We were able to deal with like six or seven, considering parrots and what not. And we were able to push through the enemies just fine like that. Attack stance is pretty good though, don't get me wrong. It can definitely bail you out, especially against some of those weary fighter generals. But overall, the key there is to move, move, move. I think that where I ended up doing the majority of the fighting is probably a decent spot, right? Push all the way to the north as fast as you can, and then push through whatever may have spawned in the meantime. Or at least that's <laughs> that's what I decided. I don't know, do you guys have your own way of tackling that map? I remember some people talking about it on previous parts as well. Talking about that Master Ninja spawn in particular, and I can definitely see where that one's a bastard, but... Overall, as long as you keep up the pace, I think you will be doing just fine on that map. And that really is the name of the game. As with many maps in this game, really. The longer you take there, the harder it becomes. So keep that in mind when choosing whatever you want to do. Anyways, that said, I'm done here. I hope that you all enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Let me know your thoughts as well, and I will catch you on the next one. See you then. Peace.